Hi friends, I'm Anna Hellman. Thanks so much for being here today. Today I wanna to share with you an interactive type of card. When you open it, it has a piece that moves and spins that creates a lot of interest. And for my second example of the same type of card, I'm actually going to turn it into a fun fold with that same moving spinning piece. I'm really excited to share this with you. It's oh so cute, the little creatures I'm going to be putting on them. I hope you'll watch along. Here's a little preview of the adorable creatures that are going to be on these cards moving and spinning. And I made these with this fun new bundle, Little Monkey. I'm having a ton of fun with it and I'm excited to share it with you today on these cards. Now, to make this piece, I actually need one monkey that looks like this and I need one monkey that actually is the exact reverse. And I wanna share with you now how we can create one of these, we need one facing each direction. So technically we need two. And what I have here, I have my stamping platform and I inside I have my silicone craft sheet. Really like this thing and it's perfect for this particular technique I'm doing right now. So first I'll be creating the reverse image, the one that you normally couldn't get with the particular stamp that you're using. So let's see, this set creates a monkey with the tail on the right side. I'm gonna make the one first that actually is facing the opposite way with the tail on the left side. So to do this, I put my stamp on my platform here. I'll ink it up with, I am using pecan pie ink. I am going to ink stamp onto my silicone mat here. And I like to do this a second time just for good measure. The ink doesn't stick to the silicone mat quite like it would to paper. So I like to do this a second time to get a nice good inking there. Carefully, I wanna put my paper into the platform and one more time I'm going to stamp and I'm gonna give it a really good press this time. Okay, so here is the regular monkey that I can punch out if I want to. And then when I flip this over, I have one facing the opposite way. So what I can do with this is, I'll have to trim off some of my cardstock here at the bottom. My piece was a little bit too big, but we'll punch this out on the right side. And then when we flip it over to the opposite side, you'll see that it is lined up perfectly there as well because it is exactly on the other side. So what I need now is a second one facing the regular way. I'll bring this one in, punch it out, and we are going to be ready to make this really fun interactive card. So let me bring in the pieces. I've already prepared most of the pieces for this card and we will be ready to put it together. What I have done is I had a card base, my crushed curry card base. I prepared what I wanted to go on the front of the card. This is some designer paper from a new set called Fresh as a Daisy. Cut two pieces, uh, kind of laid them not straight, uh, offset a little bit. I like the look of this. And I attached these two together. I did not attach them to the front, as you can see. I ran them through my cut and emboss machine with one of my stylish shapes, circle dies. I love this set, creates that nice stitching look. But I wanted to be able to remove them because of the way we have to put this card together, okay? I have already created the inner piece that will show through because we have this cutout in the front. I wanted some jungly looking leaves there in the background. So I use the stamp set and I stamp those in the background. And we will keep this here and be ready here in just a second to add that to the inside. So what we're doing, this is going to be a spinner card where when you open this, remove it from the envelope, the piece is the little monkeys are going to spin around, which is a lot of fun. So to make this happen, what we need to do is attach these two together with the string down the center, okay? So here's the reverse image, here is the normal image. We need to attach them together with that string in the middle. When you do this, you wanna use some really good strong adhesive. You can just use some regular scotch tape if you want to. For this part, 
but you want to get the string running down the center of one of the pieces. So you could lay your string on and put a piece of scotch tape over. I really love my Seal Plus adhesive and it is here and it's easy to use. So I am going ahead and using that for this. And then we want to get plenty of adhesive on the second one and we are going to lay it directly over the top to seal that string right in the middle. So once I have it where I want it, I'll give it a nice good press. And the next step is to attach this to the front of this card, okay? We want, this is why I had to leave this separate because we want to attach the st string really nice and tight. After we have it attached, we can go ahead and put this on top, seal it up so you won't see where the string is attached. So you want some really good adhesive, like I said, you can use the scotch tape. What I found was the scotch tape I have right here at this particular moment is not the stickiest. So I am sticking with my Seal Plus because I know this stuff will do the job. I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive over the top. That way I know for sure when I put this other piece on top, it is going to hold that string in place really well. Okay, now I just need to put normal adhesive on this to hold it to the front. We'll lay this back. I don't know if you're able to tell because I had run this all through my cut and emboss machine together, you can see the little imprints where I had that piece laying the first time. So I will add that. Now I should have told you, do you ever do something and you think, oh, I forgot to do that. Should have told you to cut your strings off first, cut the excess of your strings off, but it's okay. I can lift up my designer paper just a touch and get these cut off. We'll do the same thing up here at the top. And then I get to show you the fun part, which is what happens. Oh, let's wait one more minute. I have to, I have to put this in the background. It just won't be the same if I, we don't have the jungle in the background. You have to let me know what you think about these colors. These colors were, my color scheme was kind of a struggle today, but I, I, it's very different for me, but I, I thought I liked it when I, when I finally got there. So let me know what you think about my colors. I've created the little greeting. The greetings in the stamp set are adorable. Uh, I'm bananas about you just swinging by to say hi and little monkey. So I made this one say little monkey. Okay. So we'll pop that up. So here's what happens. Uh, if you don't do anything, it just kind of hangs out. It moves a little bit depending on how you attach it, but here's what you want to do when you put it in before you put it in the envelope, spin it around, doesn't matter which way, spin it around several times. Go ahead, lay it flat, put it in the envelope. And when they remove it from the envelope and start to open it, here's what happens. It spins around like that. So isn't that cute? And it's really quick and easy to make. Here you can see the inside. Again, I'm bananas about you with all those leaves that I used. And if that's not fun enough, we're going to step this up here with a fun fold card. So there are different ways you can design these so that when you open them, the piece spins, but we are going to take this a step farther and create what's called a tunnel fold card with one of these spinners inside. So I had to play around with this for a while to, to make sure this was going to work, but I, I finally figured it out. So let me explain what I've created here. I did create the card front. I stamped the monkey, I stamped the branch, I and, and all the leaves, and I colored them in with my water painters. I love to do coloring that way. It's carefree. If you go outside the lines, it's not a big deal. Just a fun way to do some coloring. Then this piece is the same size as my card base, five and a half by eight and a half. I scored it in three spots. I scored it at two and one eighth, four and one quarter, and six and three eighths. And then I folded it to look like this, okay? 
I took one of my dies. This die is from the Something Fancy set. Now, after I got this done, I realized that that area wasn't quite big enough to allow my monkey to spin. Something to keep in mind when you're creating these, make sure your opening is plenty big for your piece to spin around in it. Uh, that's why I decided to go with this large circle on the next one because there was plenty of space for the monkey to spin. So I did have to run it through once and then I moved it over a little bit, ran it through again because this space wasn't quite big enough to start with. But uh, do create your die cut, run it through your machine, place your die on there, cut a space out for your spinner. And then if you want to decorate it, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and do that then. Or you can even start with that before you do any of your scoring if you want to, okay? Now, I'm going to fold this up. I'm going to place some really great adhesive, bring my Seal Plus back in in several spots now because this is so strong i don't have to put a lot of it on if you're using a less strong adhesive you may want to put it all over here and we are going to open up the inside of this card lay this piece on and we have to make sure to push it back far enough that the monkey isn't going to stick out on the right side so i like to keep it out about as far on this side as i can without that monkey sticking out. So once you have it in place, just rotate the front of the card over, give it a good press. Now we'll flip all of this over the opposite way, put adhesive back here. If you like to make fun fold cards, knowing the easiest way to get all those pieces laid down is total game changer, isn't it? When you know how to put these in place in the easy way, it, it makes a huge difference. Okay, so let's spin them around. Let's close this up and then we'll open it up and see the results. Just swinging by to say hi and then we open it up and he spins around. So I debated what greeting to put on the inside. I decided to, a lot of times I like to leave mine blank on the inside until I know what I'm using them for because this could be for pretty much anything. Uh, it could be a get well card. It could be just saying hello, birthday, something for a child, all kinds of things. So uh, those are my example of spinner cards. I hope you enjoyed these. I hope you can try these out yourself. If you're interested in any of the products I showed, there's links in the video description below. Please like and share and subscribe to my channel while you're here. Hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.